of 45 on the Berlin Victory Parade. parade. And by this time, already the relationship between Soviet Russia, Soviet Union, and the Western Allies is souring. And uh, certainly the Western Allies, when they see this tank for the first time, we start getting the difference. And it when they got into service. The Cromwell actually sees very good service in the breakout battles in Normandy. They'd already started designing a replacement with thicker armour and more firepower. And so really what you've got here is almost like a heavy cruiser. Sorry, I should say that's the tank coming on now, our Fury tank. That's the one with the twin diesel in the back of it. And uh, again, the Americans themselves weren't over keen on diesel engine tanks, so they tended to give those ones away. They were the ones handed out as part of Lend Lease. Not that many were used by the American Army. We then have the M4A3. That's got a 500 horsepower Ford engine. Uh, that's a Tesla engine. And then the M4A4, which is not a fire necessarily on the move. It's not like a modern tank gun that can lock on a target. doesn't matter where the hole goes. As long as the gun can remain locked on the target, it will. Um, with the Sherman, the idea was that the stabilisation of what they call azimuth, in other words, up and down, by the way of keeping it off the target or near enough on the target, of them, they went out to France, they had a few weeks before they first went into action. So they were the guys that were making it up as they went along.
different types of suspension, what they're going to do about armour protection, do they want the engine at the rear or the front of the vehicle, and the Americans are off to put the engine at the rear and having the gearbox at the front. So if you want velocity rounds. In fact, towards the end of the war, they started getting what they call a HVAP, a high velocity armor piercing round, uh, from all the forms of war issued. And some of the tank crews, that's got a tungsten core and a big case around it. And again, that round had better penetration than the same point of time. process as the war progresses. So these are eight ton half tracks. Um, the ones built at the end of the war look very different compared to the ones. So many vehicles after that, a second lease of life after the war, and it's actually towing around the tank museum Pack 43 gun. That's the 88 millimeter gun that you see on vehicles like the Peak Tiger and uh, in the uh, what else have got to be doing? We've got Pack 43 on the uh, Jack Hand as well. So it's a slightly longer, higher velocity the um, eight ton, the Krauss Maffei eight ton vehicle drives past again. You can have a look at that, uh, the German system of leaving road wheels. If you look on that, uh, the track piece, that is the German system designed in the circuit, the whole idea of interleaving the road wheels is that you, you can support on the track at heavier weight. Um, the only problem, of course, is that the tiger which has got that interleaved road wheel system, if you've got to get to an inner wheel to replace it, you've got problems. Um, so you have to do is they're looking at a tank that is going to be, think World War I, think a tank that is going to be leaving the infantry to break through. So again, in the hull of the Char B, you've got a 75mm howitzer, and the whole idea of that howitzer is it fires high explosive, it can actually smash its way through enemy emplacements, it can blow up artillery positions. It was only a little later, at the beginning of the 30s, that they decided that it might also be armoured vehicles, German tanks, potentially. And that's when they decided to give it that turret that they were also putting on other French tanks. Uh, they aimed the gun, and uh, again, from the point of view of the actual top turret, where the commander is, um, that's where they'd end up firing a, a call from using the gun there, the 47mm at enemy tanks. In the arena. There's our wonderful Panzer III. Some of you have been here before. You have seen this before here at the museum. This one was captured in North Africa, brought back to Britain for evaluation. It's an L model. Um, it's what they call a tropic. It's tropicalized. It's got bits on it that were done um, to, so it could uh, withstand the heat of North Africa. And uh, they thought this one might be an export vehicle as well. They actually don't make many of these though. They only make 34 light Mark IVs. They have a, a model Mark V, they make a few of those, but then they get it absolutely right with a Mark VI. That's the one they made a lot of. And uh, again, the Mark VI was first made in 1936, only a couple of years after this one. So you can see often tanks we're looking at, sometimes a part of the development process. These ones were made in uh, 1934 to 35. they made about 34 of them. Now this light Mark IV sat in one of our we put together just before the Second World War, we really wanted three basic tank types. Light tanks for scouting, flanking, reconnaissance duties, 
really taking the place of the horse cavalry. We would have infantry tanks, thick armour, low speed, doesn't matter too much about firepower. Think like the First World War to lead the infantry across what was described in the manuals at the time, the shell strewn battlefield. And the idea here was it could take punishment if it going slowly, it would cut down a wire, the machine gun would suppress the enemy and let our infantry break through a front fire. That's the idea of these days in the front fire. And uh, what they did was join the army, the army builder, who um, did it pretty bluntly on a budget. Now Simon's already mentioned there's a number of veterans around the place, some of the crews, um, there's volunteers from our friends organisation, they're crewing some of these vehicles, uh, and around the site today there will be plenty of people who have served on the vehicles. You would have there about 55 miles an hour, it's got a 19 radio set on the back shelf behind the driver, and uh, the idea there is you whip around the battlefield as quickly as you possibly can, uh, the armour plate on the front will stop a bullet, but not much else. And the idea there is you can report back what's going on. Now, the Dingo went into service in 1939. 6,600 of them were made overall.